we're looking at uh, consumer and producer surplus this is uh, chapter 9 in the textbook we're looking specifically on the implication and the effect of government interventions so that means stuff like uh, minimum and maximum prices import quotas uh, import subsidies taxes um, those policies and strategies that government tend to have how does that influence consumer and producer surplus or the welfare effect within the economy so let's look at a couple of examples uh, that uh, you know how we can ask that uh, how do you how do you answer these type of questions uh, in tests and in the exam so here we go we have a market for widgets and uh, we have the demand curve and we have our supply curve so the first question is fairly straightforward we want to know what's the equilibrium price and quantity so to measure that we are going to set the demand and supply curve equal to one another so that means 10 minus q equals q minus 4 to take the q to the one side and the 4 to the other so we have 14 equals 2q so that means q equals 7 okay so i've done a couple of shifts multiplied by 0 on one side and the other side and in the end we have an answer of q equals 7 so that means we have 7 widgets within the market that is where uh, our equilibrium quantities so the price we just insert the 7 so price is we use the demand curve 7 equals 10 minus q to get the quantity sorry this is this is not right that should be price and this should be 7 so that means our price equals 3 so our quantity equals 7 there we go and our price equals 3 next question so now government imposes a tax of a 1 rand we want to know what's the price that the buyer pays and the price that the seller receives okay so this is important the way that we ask this question so that means i want to know from you what so let me state it like this so a tax in the work that we've done so far we've said that the tax burden falls equally on both the supplier and the person that demands it okay so the firm and the, the household or the individual so for a one rand tax that means that it's going to be split equally between the consumer and the producer but to get the, the exact price that each will pay or receive is what we're going to do so let's do this step by step the price that the buyer pay minus the price that the seller receives must be equal to one so the difference between the two should be equal to one and we know that we will be at equilibrium so if we take this concept and we substitute this concept with the equations that we have so the price that the buyer pays minus the price that the seller receives will be equal to one so now we can calculate the quantity that will be sold within the market because we we now we can now solve q so let's do that so we solve q we say 10 minus q equals 1 plus q minus 4 
So that means if we take the Q to the other side and we take the 1 and the 4 to the other side, it's 10 minus 1 plus 4 equals 2Q. And this is 9 and it's 13 equals 2Q. That means Q is equal to 6.5. Five. So 6.5 units will be sold within the market. Now what we do is we take this quantity and we substitute it within each of these demand equations for the buyer and the seller individually, which will then give us a specific price for each of them. So that means, let's go back to the demand. So the buyer at 6.5 units, 6.5 units, the buyer price is equal to 3.5 so the buyer will actually pay 3.5 and at supply we say that 6.5 so price for the for the seller will be 1.5 oh sorry that's 2.5 not 1.5 but 2.5 so the buyer will pay 3.5 and the seller will receive 2.5 and then the one rand will go to government. So the implication of this is that at equilibrium we have a quantity of 7 and a price of 3. Now because of the, the tax, the quantity demanded in this market will decrease to 6.5. And, and at 6.5 we will have a price of 3.5 that's paid by the buyer. And the seller will receive a price of two and a half. And then to just to double check if we were correct, the difference between the price that the buyer pays and the price that the seller receives must be equal to one.